welcome to Backyard Science. My name is Marilyn. I work at the Marina Branch at the Monterey County Free Libraries. Generally, I do preschool story time, but this week I will be looking at some super succulents with you. Today we'll learn some succulent facts. We will dissect a particularly interesting and useful kind of succulent and start an experiment to see how succulents reproduce. So think about when you've seen a cactus, whether it's in real life or in a TV show or movie, maybe you have gotten a sunburn and rubbed some aloe vera on, on it to make it feel better. Maybe you've even eaten some nopales or prickly pear, which are a big part of Mexican cuisine. All of these things have one thing in common, and it's that they are considered succulents. Succulent comes from the Latin word succus, which means juice or sap. Maybe you've had a succulent or juicy piece of meat or fruit, but in this case, succulent refers to a broad grouping of plants across many different plant families with special characteristics that help them survive in areas with very little water. Some of these succulent adaptations that allow them to survive in these areas are absent or highly modified leaves, waxy or fuzzy leaves to maintain moisture inside the plant. They also have special pores or stomata, which open at different times. Generally, plants need CO2 to photosynthesize, which they combine with the sun for energy but many succulents have adaptations that allow them to open their stomata at night and absorb CO2 then, and then close it during the day so that they don't lose moisture. And then the CO2 that they've stored allows them to photosynthesize with the sun. Um, they can also photosynthesize through their stems and not just their leaves, like many other kinds of trees. Succulents often have roots that are close to the surface of the ground, which enables them to absorb water through dew and not through deep tap roots like a lot of trees or plants use. Succulents don't wilt at high temperatures, which enables them to hang on to water even when it gets very hot. Also, many succulents have high concentrations of mucilage, which is a gluey, sticky substance that stores water and food for the plant and in some cases can help with seed germination. Some cactus species have a very high mucilage concentration and some of them can even survive for up to two years with, without water. Before we go into how succulents reproduce, I wanted to show you some of the aloe that's in my yard. This is actually technically right in front of my yard by our fence, uh, but this is a kind of aloe. I don't believe it's aloe vera like what you saw in the little container I showed you, but there are many plants in the aloe family. And you can see that it has these kind of distinctive spiky leaves, ro a rosette shape, and also these red flowers which, um, that are trumpet shaped and attract pollinators like hummingbirds and butterflies, which we will talk about in a little bit. But I wanted to show you, let's see if I can show you some of the mucilage that you might find that gets made into the aloe vera gel or lotion or even makeup and soap like what we see. So here you can see from the leaf, it has this very jelly, slimy stuff, and that is the mucilage. If you break into it a little more, um, you can see it a little better. Some people make drinks out of aloe as well. So yeah, this is this is aloe. So if you have, just be careful with these spikes, if you have an aloe plant in your yard, you should definitely explore and give it a shot and see how it feels. It's a very interesting feeling, but the fluid like this helps the plant to store water. And that's why they do so well in low water environments. And here is the roof set shape. Here are some 
dried flowers, and then here are, here are the trumpet shaped flowers, and then here are some seed pods. Well, I don't know that these actually were fertilized, they might actually have seeds in them, but we can take one and open it up and see. Succulents can get very big, like this agave. Here is another diverse group of succulents. You can see this barrel type that looks more like a typical cactus with the little flowers. You can also see this rosette with more beautiful flowers on it. Again, rosette is just the kind of the form that it's called. So as you can see, there is a lot of variation. One of the other interesting things about succulents is how easily they reproduce. Now because we see flowers, which we know is the reproductive part of the plant, they do produce seeds. However, succulents can also reproduce by propagation, which is an asexual or cloning form of reproduction. In propagation, the succulents when the leaf falls off or if um, or if a whole rosette comes away they can actually root and grow a whole new plant i wanted to grow or propagate more succulents from some of the leaves of the succulents in my yard so five days ago i plucked off some leaves and laid them out take a look this is after five days and you can see for instance on this one there's a little hard part, that's the callus that's starting to seal over where I broke the leaves off so that they will start to root. And some of them may not have broken off well enough to root, but I will keep you up to date as they grow. I wanted to grow or propagate more succulents from the leaves of the succulents in my yard. So five days ago, I pulled off some leaves and laid them out. Take a look. When a leaf falls off, it forms a callus, which shields the plant from bacteria growth as it's trying to Reroot and it helps the plant to dry out as it's giving its nutrients to the new growth. You can try this yourself. Use your fingernail or a knife or scissors to sever the leaf or rosette of, or you know, the rosette with a stem from a succulent and either dry it out on, as you saw on the towel to root it or set it on spe special succulent soil that drains really well. Too much water can cause rot or other bacterial infections to set in to succulents because again, they're adapted to low water environments. So most succulents you can take care of by misting so that they can absorb the water and it doesn't mold on their stems or leaves. Um, you can experiment with different species and different environments like such as less or more sun or different kinds of soil to see how succulents in your area grow. Now that we know some basic succulent characteristics, why are there so many here in California? Well, there are some native California species. Many are imported from Central and South America and even as far as Africa. This is because with droughts and our water conservation issues here in California, many people have switched from grass lawns that require a lot of watering and often replanting to succulents that are long-lived and don't need as much water, which saves water, time, and money. Now, because succulents have evolved to exploit their environment to propagate very well, they can take over. Some of them grow fairly rapidly. A negative example of this is ice plant, which you might have heard about. It has kind of almost like almost daisy like yellow and pink flowers. It's really pretty to look at, but it forms these carpets and it's invasive, so there are, are no real natural ways for it to be eradicated. So it can choke out native plant populations. So that's an example of a succulent that has taken over a little bit. 
So if you have a choice with succulents that you get in your yard, it's good to try to get native species that attract pollinators that are around here, like hummingbirds and butterflies. A one genus or group of succulents that is native or endemic even to California are those in the Dudleya genus. Uh, a bluff lettuce, which is Dudleya farinosa, uh, is in cypress groves in Point Lobos and Del Monte Forest here in Monterey. It uh, grows on bluffs, which is why it's called bluff lettuce, and it because it is on the bluff, it allows the water to drain away from the plant. There are some species of Dudleya that are endangered, but there are some that you can grow yourself. Some succulents are also endangered from habitat loss because they do live in such a narrow kind of sweet spot of low water, um, as well as kind of poaching from the ornamental succulent trade. So it's best to try to be sustainable when you are sourcing your succulents. People create many artistic structures and projects with succulents because of their striking appearance, relative ease of care, and incredible variation in structure and color. The next time you're in, back, in your backyard, I hope you will keep an eye out for the really distinctive spiky, waxy, or smooth leaves of our beautiful super succulents. Let us know what succulents that you find in your backyard or on your nature walks and have fun exploring. Thanks for watching. Bye.